Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Harris, graduate of dental surgery from Lahore. Today we have a very interesting topic in our hands and that is tooth innervation and pain pathway. So we all know that dental pain is very intense and it is one of the most excruciating pains that is known to mankind. The reason of such excruciating pain is the rich nerve supply of the tooth. Now, the tooth is supplied by the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve and this nerve is basically it has three branches it has an ophthalmic branch maxillary and a mandibular branch the maxillary and the mandibular divisions supply the teeth through their alveolar branches so the trigeminal nerve through the alveolar branches of its maxillary and mandibular divisions supplies the teeth in the oral cavity. In addition to the trigeminal nerve, we have some sympathetic fibers. Now these sympathetic fibers have a very important function and their function is to regulate the blood flow inside the tooth. So generally, the trigeminal nerve supplies, the teeth, and the sympathetic fibers regulate the blood flow inside the teeth. There is no evidence of any parasympathetic fiber inside the tooth. So, if someone asks you this question about the role of parasympathetic fiber in the tooth, they have no role. So we know about the general nerve supply of the teeth and now we will look how the nerve fibers are traveling inside the tooth. The tooth is a very small and enclosed space. Now we know that a nerve has two components. It has a cell body which contains the nucleus, the nucleolus, and other subcellular organelles. Secondly, it is the main controller of the function of the nerve. Second, it has an axon, which is a projection of, a cytoplasmic projection of the cell body, and it is enclosed by a membrane. So the axon is responsible for transduction of the signals, and the cell body is the controller of the function of the nerves. Now the cell bodies when present in clusters are known as nuclei. The cell bodies of the trigeminal nerve are located in the trigeminal ganglion. Now then, we have discussed about the cell bodies, we have discussed about the axon, now how they enter the small pulp space. This is a very important concept and all of you must know the basic structure of the nerves which enter the tooth. So here I've drawn the basic structure of the tooth. This region over here is known as the epical foramen which is right at the apex of the root. Now the axons in thousands enter the epical foramen and they continue forward to the coronal dentine. When they reach the coronal dentine they fan out and this fanning is known as 
the rash gal plexus. So the axons in thousands reach the apical foramen, traverse into the dentine. When they reach the coronal dentine, they form a plexus, which is known as the rash gal plexus. So ladies and gentlemen, we discussed about the general nerve supply of the teeth and now we will come on to the pain pathway. That is the other category of today's topic. So we discussed that thousands of axons enter the tooth from the apical foramen and it pans out to form the rash gall plexus. There are two major types of fibers that are present inside the tooth. First, we have the A delta fibers and secondly we have the C fibers. The A delta fibers are larger in diameter. They have a layer of myelin over them so they are myelinated and they carry fast pain. We'll come on the detail of fast and slow pain later. But first, have, we have a small overview of both of these fibers. The C fibers, as contrary, they have smaller diameter. They are unmyelinated. And they carry slow or dull pain. Now, fast pain is the pain which is felt after about a tenth of a second when the stimulus is applied and slow or dull pain is the pain which is felt after one second or more after the application of a stimulus. So whenever you ask the patient about what sort of pain or what is the character or nature of the pain he has been going through, he will tell that the pain comes in waves. First there is <clears throat> a rapid wave of pain which is followed by a slower wave, then again a rapid, then a slow, so an alternating baby pattern of pain. Secondly, we will discuss about the pathway of how the pain is carried from the source towards the pain center in the brain. Now, all of the axons and all of the sensory nerves that are present <clears throat> inside the body, they are transmitted to the brain through the spinal cord. So, excuse my drawing, but this is how cross-section of a spinal cord looks. The fibers enter through the posterior aspect of the spinal cord. This is the anterior aspect, this is the posterior aspect. Through the posterior horn of the spinal cord, the fibers enter the spinal cord. And from here, they move towards the opposite side, and in the anterior portion there are ascending pathways which carries all the sensations from the body to the brain the ascending tracks from here the fibers will move towards the brain so an A delta fiber which is more commonly found in the junction of the dentine and the pulp and the C fiber which is abundantly found in the pulp core both of them follow the same pathway the difference in both of their pathways is that the A delta fiber follows a single course inside the spinal cord moves to the opposite side and then it continues as a single neuron as a single order nerve inside the brain it directly approaches the thalamus where the pain center is present the C fibers on the other hand when they start and they enter the spinal cord they have an additional neuron and the signal has to travel a greater distance before it reaches the brain the other difference is that most of the C fibers they terminate inside the brain stem. 
So their point of termination is different. The distance which a signal has to carry, this is, sorry, the distance which a signal has to travel before it reaches the brain is greater traveled by the C fibers and less by the A delta fibers. So this was a very basic idea of the tooth pain and I hope that you found this lecture helpful. Indeed this was a conceptual and a tricky lecture but this is the basis of the tooth pain and the pulp pain relationship. So if you have any questions ask in the comment section below. This is Dr. Harris. Thank you very much.